This is my business card, and it says Keeper of Earth and Time. The New York Earth Room is a sculptural installation by Walter De Maria. It's uh, 140 tons of earth installed in a 3,600 foot loft. It is maintained so that it looks like the day it was installed. When one of my kids uh, were little, uh, they had they invited parents to come in and talk about the work they did. And uh, so I visited the classroom and I brought a rake with me. And um, I just thought it would be fun to have the kids guess what I did. And so I stood in front of the class with this thing. And uh, the kids, they were young. They all thought I had something to do with dinosaurs. But uh, it was fun to do that, to have the kids realize that uh, you can work in the city and use tools like this. So. Oops. I was with this friend of mine, Jim, and uh, we had occasion to come by the Earth Room. And while I was there, I noticed the guy sitting at the desk at the Earth Room. And afterwards, asked Jim, I said, does that job ever open up? Because at that time, I was doing freelance carpentry, and I had two little kids. And um, the freelance aspect of it uh, seemed daunting with little children. And so Jim, two months later, said that that guy at the Earth Room was leaving, and would I really be interested in that job? And uh, I expressed <laughs> interest in it enough so that he countered, thinking that I might be crazy to take it. And I countered him, saying I thought I might be crazy to not take it. So that's how I came to be at the Earth Room. And that was in 1989. I water and rake it routinely almost. Oh, so you walk on it? I walk all over it. And how many years have you been doing this? 28 years. Serious? Serious. Whoa. <laughs> To me, it just seemed like uh, an obvious good thing that it presented that balance to life in the city. You know, you have all that changing, chaotic New York City thing. You know, it's a New York City monument, the Earth Room. And uh, so it, it fits right into New York City, but it stands almost in opposition to all that commercialism and all that noise and uh, it being so quiet. Sometimes I tell people that uh, they ask me what I do, and um, just to have a little impact, I sometimes tell them that I'm the keeper of Earth and time. And, uh, you know, it always kind of throws people on their heels, but I can back it up because, as well as taking care of the Earth Room, I take care of the oldest tower clock in New York City. That tower clock is on the corner of Henry and Rutgers in the Lower East Side, and I've lived since 1979 um, opposite that church. And so for the first year that uh, I lived there, the clock was running, and then it stopped. And um, a neighbor of mine and I thought to go look and just see what was going on. And we went into the tower, and uh, there was something broken. And I got the help of someone who was taking care of the clock tower in lower Manhattan to get it going. And I've taken care of this clock now for about well over 30 years.
Should be good. As long as it's making contact on this side of the slot, that the pendulum swing just taps four times or more on that side and doesn't hit this side, then it should be uh, good for another week. This was New York City's oldest tower clock. So many other clocks like this have been converted to electricity and instead of this beautiful uh, clock mechanism, there's just a small electric box that powers the faces. But this is simple physics, weights and, and gears, and it's functioned well for uh, all this time. And I think it could go on forever. Another thing that I do uh, working at the Earth Room is I record the numbers of people coming to visit. And uh, Dia needs that number, really just one number at the end of the year for purposes of fundraising. And so I um, make marks for everyone who comes in. And I keep these books and I now have a great number of the books. And in those books is essentially a map of the day. And it records both the number and um, the kind of place and hourly sequence in which these people came to visit. So it's, uh, they're like stories without words that is readable. I mean, it is a map of the day. And, uh, you know, once you know how to read them, they're, they're pretty easy to read. And this is a space between, say, 109 and, and uh, one. 25 where no one came in. Little groups. Very slow afternoon. Look at that. No one came in in that part of the day. Oh, what happened here? This is a group that's so big that they turned twice. Someone came down from the building and dropped some strawberries on the desk. <laughs> it was a gift. It was a nice thought, but they stained the page. And for some reason, this person looks different than it. <laughs> than anyone else. <laughs> but that's a lot of people. It's 121. Oh, that's a funny page. It just sweeps. To be honest, I don't understand the people who had the job before me and left. There were maybe four or five people who had the job. And um, they were artists, and I think they were pursuing an art career. And, um, I understand that, but uh, I was never very drawn to the art world. A lot of things about it that I don't really care for. I, it seems sort of like an exclusive club, um, and I'm not much of a club joiner. I remember, too, Ed, uh, Edward Albee, the playwright, once said that those who must be heard will be heard. I, I just don't feel like I must be heard. I always felt like I was in a position to kind of figure out how to make art continually without depending on sales. I just recognized early on that uh, I might enjoy my life on my own terms and not on the art world's terms. You know, I value my freedom and by having this situation, I'm able to make whatever I want to make and uh, I make the art that I want to see. Someone just um, recently asked me if I thought taking care of the clock was part of my art practice. And my answer to her was that I think my life is my art 
practice. So that's the unifying element to all the things that I do. It's just a chosen way of living. And, um, you know, I, I've been able to live in a way that I've found to be sort of compelling and, and uh, unique and particular to myself. And uh, I like it. <laughs>